Ooh, we're on Facebook. There we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Come on in. Okay, let's uh, get started. Um, we're just gonna kick it off with a song. It's okay to be gay. We are different to men. I make LGBTQ plus and social justice videos for all ages with my best friend, Teddy. I also host a new podcast called Activist You, Activist Y-O-U, and I interview inspirational kid and youth activists. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. And I perform all over the place, just like I'm doing right here. And today we're going to do some Queer Kid Stuff songs. We're going to celebrate Pride. Today is Global Pride Day. How cool is that? The whole world is celebrating the LGBTQ plus community. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some um, awesome LGBT historical figures and why they're so important to Pride today and sing some more songs and uh, generally just have a great queer time. Um, so. Before I get into this next song, I have to know, please drop in the comments, what your favorite imaginary creature is. I want to know what your favorite imaginary creature is. This is very, very important. And you have to tell me this because I'm going to tell you my favorite imaginary creature is a unicorn. I've got a couple over here. Can kind of see. There one unicorn, two unicorn, oh, and three unicorns. <laughs> um, unicorns are my favorite mythical creature. And does anybody know what mythical creature a unicorn is kind of like? Or sorry, a real creature that unicorns are kind of like? Does anybody know? It's a horse, right? A horse. And what sound does a horse make? Did everyone make the sound of a horse? Nay! Yeah, all right, cool. Did everybody do it? Everyone got their nay? So for this song, I'm gonna need a little bit of your help. And when I point my ukulele at you, or and Teddy also points at you, let's do that. You're gonna have to make the loudest neighing noise you can, okay? Can we all do that? Oh, and my dog. Oh, my dog is also gonna to help too. All right, so we're gonna practice on three. One, two, three, nay! All right. Oh. Good job, Georgie. Okay, so we're gonna do that when I point at you in the middle of this song. All right, let's go. Horses with horns are called unicorns. Some other horses shout, nay, cause unicorns stand out. and being different is what makes you you and me and even you teddy queer means different queer means different everybody queer means different queer means different queer means different queer means different and being different is so much fun Now this idea that unicorns are kind of like queer horses and talking about the word queer, these are very important things that we talk about on Queer Kid Stuff with Teddy. And talking about how the word queer has to do with the whole LGBTQ plus community and anyone who feels different 
and how being different is such a cool thing to be. Um, I love using the word queer. I identify as queer, but I also identify as something else. Have you, anyone ever heard the word non-binary? I know it's a big word. So non-binary has to do with gender. Has anybody heard of the word gender before? That's probably a word you've heard more often, right? So gender is about how we feel and how we express ourselves. So that might be through our clothes, through our hair, through the activities and hobbies we like to do. That all has to do with who we are and how we feel about ourselves. And another way we like to express our gender is through something called pronouns. Has anybody ever heard of pronouns? I think Teddy's heard of pronouns before. So pronouns are words that we use to replace someone's name, and they usually have to do with our gender. So some pronouns, you've probably heard them before, are she and her, and he and him, and they and them. I use they and them pronouns. So we're going to sing a little song about pronouns. and so important to the LGBTQ plus community. LGBTQ plus Pride Month is June of every year and it's almost over, but this weekend is the most important weekend of Pride because it's the anniversary of something called the Stonewall Riots. Has anyone ever heard of the Stonewall Riots? Well, it was the beginning of the LGBTQ plus movement as we know it. And every year we celebrate its anniversary. So today, what I wanted to do is I'm gonna read from this book called Rainbow Revolutionaries, 50 LGBTQ plus people who made history. And I'm gonna to talk to you about two of these incredible LGBTQ plus people who made history that have to do with Stonewall and the beginning of the LGBTQ plus movement. So, the first person we're going to learn about is my friend, and her name is Marsha P. Johnson. All right, this is Marsha. That's Marsha P. Johnson. She was a black trans woman, and she lived from 1945 to 1992. Marsha P. Johnson. Marsha was a bright light of Greenwich Village in New York City. She lit up everywhere she went with her big smile and kind personality. She, also, she often dressed up with flowers in her hair and fun outfits. Everyone loved Marsha and she loved everyone. One time, Marsha was down to her last $2 and she used it to buy a box of cookies. She gave out all the cookies to others on the street, not leaving any for herself. She knew what it was like to be hungry, and she cared about helping anyone in the same situation, even if she was hungry herself. Marsha, who was at the 1969 Stonewall Rebellion, just like we talked about, and maybe even helped start it, was really close friends with Sylvia Rivera, 
and the two of them saw their trans community struggling. So many young trans people in New York City were homeless and Marsha and Sylvia wanted to give them a place to be safe off the streets. Whenever they got a hotel room, they would sneak kids in, up to 50 people in two hotel rooms at a time. That's pretty small. In 1970, they raised the money to rent a four bedroom apartment they called Star House. There was no heat or electricity to start out, but it was more than many who stayed there had had since they'd left their homes. Marsha and Sylvia worked hard to get enough money to keep Star House open, and they were the very first group to work to help trans homeless youth in New York City. Marsha is remembered as an important activist for the LGBTQ plus community and a loving mother figure for many. All right, that's Marsha P. Johnson. What an incredible person she was. And now, so we talked about Marsha and her, the importance of her in the Stonewall Rebellion and the Stonewall Riots. And now I wanna fast forward time a little bit to talk about the origins of the rainbow flag right behind me. So to do that, we have to talk about my friend Gilbert Baker. So let's find his page. This is Gilbert Baker. So you know how Marsha was in New York City? Well, we're gonna go all the other way to the other coast on the west side, where all of you probably are. And we're gonna go to San Francisco, probably also not too far from where you are. And Gilbert Baker lived in San Francisco for most of his life. And he lived from 1951 to 2017. All right, so this is Gilbert Baker. Do you know the word vexillographer? It's a cool word, right? Now it's the time to learn that word. Gilbert Baker was a vexillographer, a flag maker. He made flags and banners for political events, for anti-war protests, for rock concerts, for all kinds of things. But in June 1978, he made his most important flag, the rainbow flag. And that's like about nine years after Marsha and Sylvia had the, were a part of the Stonewall Rides. So maybe he was inspired by them. Gilbert grew up in Kansas and wanted to get out of there. He joined the army and was stationed as a medic in San Francisco and found a home there, staying after his service and living as an openly gay man. He became part of a community that included Harvey Milk. Does anyone know who Harvey Milk is? He was the very first gay mayor of San Francisco. He was a cool guy. And he, and he became a part of the community that included Harvey, Harvey Milk, a community asking for a symbol. Hmm. Gilbert stayed up for nights on end, dyeing fabric and sewing it together. Volunteers helped him as they made the first pride flag. And so something that's cool that's actually not in this book about this is that they created the very first pride flag out of this, you know, kind of boring gray material and they had to dye it themselves and they did this with, you know, with 30 volunteers in the attic of the LGBTQ plus center in San Francisco. So they had to hide in the attic while they were making this thing and they couldn't just so, and they had to get, it was so much fabric, they were making such a big flag that they got all of these huge trash cans and they put the fabric in there and they put a ton of water in each different trash can and they put the different dyes in there. And all the volunteers would go home with their faces and hands all covered in these dyes because it was so strong and they had to be working with it. And they had to um, wash the extra dye out of the, out of the fabric. So they had to actually go and take that fabric and take it to a laundromat in the neighborhood in the dead of night. They had to like secretly do laundry. Um, and so they did, and that's how they did it. And all those volunteers together stitched, hand stitched the very first pride flag. So let's get back to Gilbert. Isn't that kind of cool? The very first pride flag flew in San Francisco with eight colors, each one with a meaning like nature or healing. After dropping two of the colors due to high production costs, Gilbert's creation became known as a symbol for the LGBTQ plus community around the whole world, used in countless ways. In 1994, Gilbert made a rainbow flag that was a whole mile long to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Stonewall Rebellion. He unfurled it in New York City. Well, he and the 5,000 people who took to carry it. It broke a world record for the longest flag. Gilbert never trademarked the flag, so it belongs to the public. 
The rainbow flag is truly the most iconic, recognizable symbol of the LGBTQ plus movement, and we all owe a debt to Gilbert for creating something so unifying and empowering. And then a little addendum to that story is that a couple of years ago in Philadelphia, um, a bunch of LGBTQ plus activists came together and said, we actually need to update the flag. So they updated the LGBTQ plus rainbow flag with stripes of brown and black to symbolize the folks in the black and brown communities, the people of color who are also queer and part of the queer community. So I thought that was really cool that Gilbert's uh, design is alive and well and is is being improved upon and made better to include more people in our community. So I think that's really beautiful. Um, and I know, I know that we're so sad that we're stuck inside for Pride this year, and that's no fun. So I'm going to bring the Pride to us with this book, This Day in June. It's by Gail E. Pittman, illustrated by Christina Litton. Oh, and the other book, I can do this at the end again too, is called Rainbow Revolutionaries, and it's by Sarah Prager. This one. There's another book. So we're gonna, this book's gonna take us to our, our very own Pride March. All right, gotta make sure we can see. This day in June. This day in June, parades start soon. Rainbow arches, joyful marches. That's kind of how we're celebrating Pride today, right? From our windows. Motors roaring, spirits soaring. Cool motorcyclists, right? I love the signs in the background. That's one of my favorite. Born this way, out and proud. We love our dad's love. Voices chanting. Doggies panting. Put the little dog in there. Another cool sign, moving equality forward, love beats hate. Proud parent. I heart my gay sons. Oh, another doggy. Clad in leather, perfect weather. They look like they're having a lot of fun. Oh, ice cream. Artists painting. Sisters, same thing. With all their really cool makeup, right? Whoa. Banners swinging. Children playing. Put the kids playing in there. That's something that I love most about Pride is that everyone is welcome. Dancers jumping. Music pumping. Sidewalk shaking, oh, tummies aching, oh, someone's not having a good time. Tummy troubles, my goodness. That happens at Pride Parades, too. Painted ladies and crying babies. Maybe it's a little too hot out there for them. Fancy dresses, flowing tresses. All the cool wigs and hair and hats. Look at these hats. Very cool. Loving kisses. Oh, so delicious. Some sweet kisses in there. All invited, all excited. This day in June, we're all united. There you go. Got some cool folks in there. Everybody having a great time at the Pride Parade. The end. All right. So I think I think that means that we need a little dance party. So we're gonna do a little dance party. My mama told me that I was young. When we were all born superstars. So hold your head up, put my lipstick on in the glass of her boudoir. There's nothing wrong with loving who you are, cause they made you perfect, babe. 
Don't hold your head up, girl, and you'll go far. Listen to me when I say everybody dance. It's beautiful in your way, cause girl makes no mistakes. I'm on the right track, baby, I was on this way. No matter, get straight and fine, let me entrench you in life. I'm on the right track, baby, I was born to survive. Ooh, there ain't no other way, baby, I was on this way. Right track. So now that we have danced our little hearts out, we're going to take a little stretch. We're going to sit back down. Just like that. And we're going to sing a little song about rainbows.
got one last song for all of you, and then I will leave you here Saturday. If you watch Queer Kids stuff, you probably know this song, so please, please do sing along if you know the words. We're going to celebrate Friday together. so much for joining me today at the Oakland Public Library's Facebook page. Again, I am Linz. This is my best friend, Teddy, and we're from Queer Kids Stuff, where we make LGBTQ plus uh, videos for all ages. I also host a brand new podcast called Activist You, that's Activist Y-O-U, where I interview inspirational kid and youth activists. Uh, we're also starting up some remote learning programs, so check out our website at QueerKidsStuff.com if you're looking for social justice resources for your little ones. Uh, and check out our website's uh, schedule for more virtual events. I do these events all year long, not just during Pride. Um, so make sure you're getting your uh, queer uh, representation all year long. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Um, and Naomi, you gonna come back and help me out at the end here? Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much, Linz, we really appreciate it. Of course, thank you for having me. All right. Happy Pride, everyone. Happy Pride, everyone. Bye.